Ele não pode estar lá, mas tem um monte de lágrimas sem dar isso a medo. Tá aí, vamos bater na lixo. Tchau, 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 Pozak sendi, koyur bir şey kan, pankri da kayan bir tabi zaman bir var, zaman bir şey oldu yok. Pozak pozit olan o niyet, ne oldu tabi de tabii ona ya, ne çıkar çıkıyor ne, beni çarın çarış var ne iyi. Pozak pozit mi bu o niyet? Çaktan yuvar mı de hırdada hepsi, kanı. Nampak kan yang masyarakat ini, zaman, hari ini, mukasih sangat kongsi, mukasih sangat. Hei, zaman mukasih sangat tolong, pak. Kau ni, 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 kau Maman Ram berarti kata orang kita waktu cecung waktu itu ni sendiri mampu tahu ni pada ni debat orang boleh orang ini kimi cuci yang sempurna ni jadi tahu mana ya dia na saji cuba tak sendiri kerja jom dia macam apa jom boleh orang ni dia cuci yang dia ni And so here it referred to the blessings of the reality of the three jewels and the three roots. It says it is attracted and dissolves into me. So it, it says we said before that the rules of virtue that we accumulate have um, three um, powers. Um, the first power is the power of one's own um, intention, one's own mind. That is, if oneself has realized emptiness and has given rise to the four immeasurables and has cultivated unconditioned love and compassion for sentient beings. Then the second power is the power of the the Buddhas, the Tathagatas, and that is the love of all the Buddhas that pervades all sentient beings. Um, so it is the great love of all the Buddhas. And then the third power is the power of Dharma Dhatu. That is the realization that the mind, the ground of the mind of all the Buddhas and sentient beings is a single one. And this ground is the Buddha nature. So through understanding these three powers, whatever action we engage in, we will accomplish them and sentient beings can attain enlightenment. So the blessings of the three jewels and the three roots, the actual blessings, are the four immeasurables. Um, before here it said um, the four mudras, but that's hard to understand. Um, so the four immeasurables, and so it says they are uh, dissolve into meme. When um, this mind that pervades all sentient beings dissolves into our heart, self-grasping will collapse. It is just like the ice block is melting and becomes one with the ocean. Once um, um, the light rays of their compassion melts in our heart, and so we become inseparable. Our mind and the mind of the Buddhas are a non-dual union. It is just like pouring water from one ways in the other. The water becomes the same. So the minds merge and become the same. And one realizes that one's own mind, the mind of the Buddhas, and the mind of all sentient beings are an inseparable union. And what is the nature of this inseparable union? It is said, in essence, 
the natural ground of inexpressible clear awareness and empty clarity. It is the union of clarity and emptiness. When one lets one's mind rest within the view, there is no grasping. The mind abides like expanse of space, a union of clarity and emptiness. Within that state, free of grasping, there is no one who transfers a consciousness. There is no pure land to transfer the consciousness to, and there is no sentient being for whom one transfers. There is no duality. And so here it says, it is without something to, to be transferred and a transferum. They become an inseparable union. If one lets the mind rest within the view, free of any grasping. When a mind rests free of any grasping within the view, whatever appears um, melts like an ice block and becomes one with the water, the nature of mind. So it says, upon uttering the resounding yet empty word hick, which lies beyond mind, um, everything is united and perfected within the endless great display, free from extremes. So when one meditates within that state, whatever thoughts appear, there is no grasping, and one focuses on the visualization, and then thereafter, through uttering strongly the syllable hik, in that instant, everything disperses, all grasping and also the visualization disperses into emptiness. And then all that is left is remaining within the view. So it is said, everything is united and perfected within the endless great display free from extremes. Then one rests simply within the view and there is nothing else to be done. Then there are various methods that have been taught to liberate sentient beings depending on their mental capacity. As there are infinite um, sentient beings, there are various um, methods that are then uh, um, provided by those beings who have uh, realized the view. And then it says, your own innate awareness is transferred into the expanse of the unborn Dharmakaya. If one always remains within this view, within the Dharmakaya, this in itself becomes the most supreme offering to the Buddhas and becomes the continuous purification of sentient beings' obscuration. These are the qualities of the Dharmakaya.